Are shooting stars actually UFOs from alien worlds? If you eat the seeds in fruit, does the fruit grow in your stomach? Answers to these questions and more on this episode of This Paranormal Life. Hey, welcome. <laughs> Just hyped about Bleep that seed blue. one. <laughs> welcome back to the podcast. You are listening to This Paranormal Life, the podcast where every week we dissect a different paranormal tale, claim, or beast, and we get to the bottom of whether it is true or whether it is false. You're being joined by your favorite paranormal investigators in the whole wide world. My name is Kit Greer. This guy's name is Roy Pars. How are you doing today, Roy? I'm doing great. And joined is, you know, is one way to describe it. We came in uninvited. We broke into your house when you weren't here. Uh, we sat down and now you're listening to our voices. So I hope you're happy with that. We're sitting at the breakfast table beside you. We've eaten just about everything in the pantry. So you're getting the scraps. <laughs> and yet we're charging you for every goddamn minute we spend on you. And before we dive right in, I just wanted to bring up uh, one of our listeners, Mr. Tom Humphreys, was posting in our secret society on Facebook. Kitifer, Greg Rory, why must you do this? We as a humble threesome have broken this run of double nose with my suggestion of the Zimbabwe school encounter. Yet I hear no shout out. I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. Well, here you are, Tom. Here is your shout out. Listen, Tom. All right. I'm, I'm going to open your eyes here. The world of the paranormal is not a world where anyone gets recognition. (laughs) Because if you get recognition, it often comes in the form of shame. You think the guy who, who, you know, freaking, who first stepped foot on the moon got got his name written in in the books, in the history books? Hell no. That's right. Neil Armstrong did. He was like number 17 or something. Exactly. What I'm trying to tell you is there's no glory in the world of the paranormal. Hell, you think Rory's my real name? God, no. You no. think Kit's his real name? My parents would have disowned me a long time ago if I said my real, if I had uttered my real exactly. name in this podcast. Find pride in the shadows. That's, <laughs> as my father used to say to me, You're hide like, from the shame, really, Dad, the power's this is motto. A really weird thing to say to me on my first day of school. <laughs> Find comfort in the shadow, son. <laughs> really? I, I just thought, you know, I'd just try and make Your some friends. Your mom's in the backseat of the car, like, <laughs> just have a nice day, sweetie. And you're like, thanks, mom. I packed you uh, a peanut butter and a jelly sandwich. Thanks, mom. You should eat that in the shadows. Thanks, dad. Your dad's yeah, got wearing it. a hockey mask. Sh- sh- shadow. Th- <laughs> let no one see your identity. <laughs> Never let the mask slip. You leave the car and he's trying to drive in the hockey mask, but it's very clear he can't see the road. Like takes out a bin on the pull out. <laughs> uh, this episode topic actually comes as a, as a suggestion from our listeners, Monica Johnson and Paul Garmston. Thanks very much for that, guys. Okay. You can email in your own suggestions to this paranormal life podcast at gmail.com. Well, as always, we are back this week with a doozy. And as always, we're going to dive right into it. Let's do it. The year is 1872, December 5th. The it was men- chilly. <laughs> Don't know where it is yet. I feel a blizzard coming on. It, it might be in Australia, so it could be summertime. That's a good point. It's not in Australia. Welcome it's to just- Phantom Kangaroos Part 2. <laughs> <laughs> the down beast under. from down under. <laughs> the man above the British ship, the Dei Gratia, can make out a distant figure on the horizon. They are around 400 miles off the coast of the Azores. The waves are rough, crashing over the deck, but they can just about make out a ship. They must be in trouble, the crew thought, so they set course to help them. Wait, wait where are we? You say like Narnia or some shit? For- <laughs> I said the Azores. Uh, the Azores. Do you know where the Azores are? Yeah, it's right, look, I've got the globe here. Right. A boom. Okay, Rory's point, that's, I mean, we just talked about Australia, but you've just put it right on Brisbane, just right. right there. Okay, so let's spin it one more time. Spin the globe for me. All right. I think you'll be pretty happy with this one, mate. Yeah. Melbourne. It was spinning really fast. In fact, I don't know how you pinpointed it so accurately. <laughs> uh, where is this location? It's the Hawaii of the Atlantic. Wow. Um, right in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, in a big expanse of nothingness, there are a small amount of islands called the Azores. Ah, okay. Yeah, um, very beautiful little paradise islands. Nothing either side for like a couple thousand miles. Got it. These sailors are sailing 400 miles off the coast. Right. Yeah, this crew thought, you know, this ship in the distance, they must be in trouble. But they set course to help them. Once they were close enough, they sent a boarding party into the rough waters. Like in a little boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like little, pir- little pirates do. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I, I should have mentioned in, in the beginning, this is very much like a, like a seafaring pirate, 1872. Right, so okay. So everyone in this story is gonna talk like this. <laughs> okay. I'll just let you know right now. Cause I assume a lot here will want to tune out. <laughs> <laughs> So fair warning, ye land lovers. <laughs> the viewer retention is just dropping. <laughs> You've got about 90 <laughs> minutes of this to look forward to. <laughs> so the man reached this boat just bobbing about in the water. They climbed aboard, but no one was on deck. It was terrifyingly quiet. Mm -hmm. All they could hear were doors slowly creaking and closing in the wind and wooden boards of the deck groaning under their footsteps. Ooh. But that was it. There was a single sword on deck, and reports mentioned bloodstains on the sword. Uh-oh. The sails were battered by weather, and going into the hold, they looked around expecting to see a bunch of hardy seamen on board, but all they found were empty cabins. Okay. They looked into the men's quarters. There were just empty bed after empty bed. Personal items lying around, but no signs of life. And there was, like, even a small cot where there was the ghostly outline of a child's body in the sheets. Wait, what? <laughs> I was quite on board, if you'll pardon the pun. Yeah, oh, <laughs> I was. <laughs> Why is everyone missing except a ghost child, the, <laughs> the outline of a ghost child? Well, it's not like, it's not like a, a ghost. It's just like, you know, if you like lie in bed and it's like a memory foam mattress and then you get out of bed and then there's just like an outline of your body. Okay. That's what it is. In my head, I was thinking like nuclear blast lines scorched <laughs> into the walls. <laughs> like this kid frozen in time was just like embedded on the walls. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Like a, like a murder scene, like chalk outline of <laughs> yeah. a baby. But this sounds like a dirty little boy lay down on a bed for a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Right. Yar! Search the blaze top to bottom. Oh, Christ. Sorry, do you take umbrage with my uh, pirate accent? <laughs> Very loud. This is Very loud. And this is period correct. <laughs> Yar! <laughs> We're in a small room and you're, so, for some reason, two feet away from me. Wearing a bandana. <laughs> I know both your eyes work. I don't know why you brought the eye patch. But there was nothing. No one hiding from the storm or pirates. Much to my chagrin, no pirates to be seen for a goddamn miles. Right. No one dead. No booty plundered. In fact, the Mary Celeste as it was known, was mostly carrying alcohol. My kind of, my kind of cruise. <laughs> 1,700 barrels to be precise. Oh yeah. And from all accounts I can gather, the alcohol supply was mostly intact when they found it. All right, there no was, shame in digging in a little bit to the supplies. <laughs> there was just nine barrels empty. You know, that's, Just the nine. <laughs> listen, that's what I call, you know, a, a, a quiet night in with the missus. Nine <laughs> barrels empty. Quiet night in with Polly. <laughs> Couple of barrels. <laughs> Cracker for Polly, barrel for me. I should let you know now that Polly is how I refer to drunk me. <laughs> I'm having a good time. I'm cracking into a couple of bottles. And before you know it, Polly's here. <laughs> P Polly's loud. Polly is angry. <laughs> One barrel deep, you're naked and squawking. <laughs> there were no records or diaries to explain what had happened. Just one. It's because pirates don't. Keep diaries. I never said. What a stupid I thing to look for. I never said they were pirates. Oh, did they have um? Did they have their f***ing hairbrushes too, Kit? Huh? <laughs> what? Did they have um? Oh, did they have their uh? You can't think of anything. Uh, hold on. Okay, you can't think All of one official thing. All I can think of are thing. things that pirates would have. <laughs> For some reason, oh, I was like, oh, they have their swords? Their wooden ah, legs. Fuck. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, yeah, uh, doubloons. I bet <laughs> shit, no, they, pirates, I think, are the only ones that have doubloons. Probably a ton the of point, gold coins. The point is, why would a pirate, yes. a.k.a. criminal of the sea, keep a logbook of his misadventures? He wouldn't. They wouldn't have a diary. I never said they were pirates. Simply what? Said, I simply imitated a pirate. Okay. I didn't say they were actually pirates. Well, these still don't sound like law-abiding men. Right. I wouldn't be looking for any logs of what's going on. Well, we don't know who they are just yet. But there was a log. Oh, shit. <laughs> there was one ship log whose last entry was 10 days previous. Bad pirates. <laughs> Bad pirates. In the bottom of the ship, around the cargo of alcohol, there was about three feet of water. 
and one of the ship's pumps was dismantled. But the ship wasn't going down, it was completely fine. There was even a six month supply of food and drink for the crew, totally untouched. Oh my God. But it was no random ship out on the high seas. The captain of the De Gratia, the ship that went aboard the Mary Celeste, right. Captain David Morehouse was shocked. He knew this boat looked familiar. It was a Mary Celeste. He remembered it from being docked in New York. He had actually sat down to dinner with the captain of the Mary Celeste while docked in New York. They were friends. What? Before they both left for Italy. The Mary Celeste had set off a week before him. So he knew it should have arrived in Italy like ages ago. Yeah. Well, a week ago, right? Uh, (laughs) This is going poorly. I noticed you just <laughs> threw a little rum into that Pepsi Max. <laughs> I know that's kind of tying with the theme of the podcast, but I am worried about you. Because I, you've been drinking a lot of rum before you were researching this podcast. Listen, Roy, I don't need to be grilled on the details of this because in the last week since our last episode, I have lived on the high seas <laughs> really? preparing for this pod. It, that's the sunburn, I guess. I haven't slept. You look really dehydrated. Since last episode, that's right. And I would appreciate it if I would... <laughs> this is the sunstroke kicking You are in, so dude. sea battered. Holy shit. You look like driftwood with eyes. <laughs> No, this is a mask. I've put on this mask to protect my face from the sun because it's f***ing hot out there. <laughs> and so you wouldn't know the identity of I, Kit Greer. <laughs> captain Kit Greer. You are not you. a captain. Tell that to my crew. All children. Wow. That's this right. is illegal. You can't do that. Don't tell their parents. <laughs> By the way, this cruising on the ocean, was this the, the pictures that you took in Hyde Park on the swan boats? Not a, not a pirate ship. I'm hungry as shit. We tried to catch some <laughs> swans to share with my crew. <laughs> Turns out those swans are pretty nippy, actually. And they all actually had pack lunches from their mothers. <laughs> I was the only one. They wouldn't even share it with their captain. <laughs> those little Mut- bastards. <laughs> Mutiny, I cried. <laughs> one by one, I made them walk the plank. <laughs> they just walked the little bridge back to land. <laughs> just walk on. Come back. <laughs> You guys actually had the freaking strongest legs to paddle. So knowing this, Captain David... <laughs> Captain <laughs> David, that is not a real captain's name. I need to name. not say that. <laughs> <laughs> ...was able to piece together something that happened. What we do know is the Mary Celeste set sail November 7th, okay. 1872. On board was Captain... <clears throat> the rum is... It's really kicking in now, yeah. It's not really rum, it's denatured alcohol. Did I mention the alcohol on board was not drinking alcohol? Was it rubbing? It was ethanol. It was pure ethanol. Jesus. I thought for the method acting, I thought it would be good to like drink. Drink raw alcohol? Drink the alcohol. Definitely bad idea. Drink the ethanol. It looks like you're mixing it with seawater as well, which you should know is not drinkable. The salt is like electrolytes. It would like perk me up. Not true. Offset the ethanol. (laughs) <laughs> wanted to be one with mother nature like the pirates <laughs> did <laughs> you're so convinced pirates drank seawater why do you think they were such gnarly bastards <laughs> what on board the mary celeste was captain benjamin spooner briggs okay his wife sarah uh their two-year-old daughter they're all dead and seven other crew jesus which i kind of like to imagine that you know, this wasn't like the captain just taking his family on his voyage, but it was like his wife and the two-year-old were badass pirates. Right, right, right. You know, yeah, like, he, they weren't just tagging along. It was the whole crew. That two, two-year-old was like singing sea shanties and whipping the other guys <laughs> rowing into shape. It was probably his sword. <laughs> and we have a pretty standard log of the journey, at least right up until November 25th, a few weeks after they left New York, when they reached the Azores. And that's when it all went pear-shaped. What All we know from there is that they, they got to within a few miles of the coast of um, the Azores, but they obviously didn't get there because the boat yeah. was floating then 400 miles off the coast. Right, right, right. So what did the men of the De Grazia do? Well, they sailed this sick puppy all the way to Gibraltar, the British colony on the southern tip of Spain. That sounds like a bad idea. Why? I don't know a lot about ghost ships. <laughs> But I think rule number one is don't f-ing touch them. Yeah. Leave yeah. that bad boy anchored. Like, what do you do? 
But I guess it's like, it's worth a lot you of money. You cannonball that bish to the bottom of the ocean. Wow, That's what you do. Yeah. <laughs> but it's worth like a ton of money. This is like- Ghost I'm, money? But imagine you, okay, I'm trying to think of a good example here. You're out on like, hike. Okay? I often I, am. I know you, I know you're a healthy guy. You like to go on things like that. Yeah. Um, not me, I like cabins and ships, <laughs> barrels of rum, that kind of thing. Right. You're on a hike, you know, you, you get a few miles in the hike, you know, it's real wilderness. Okay. Um, birds flapping around. You've and... clearly never been outside. <laughs> Spoken like a man who has truly never been outside. You know, you know you're like, up there, sky's loud. Uh, <laughs> the clouds are just blasting you in the you're eyes. You're just out there with Mother Nature, just drinking out of puddles, <laughs> bouncing on bushes like trampolines. Right, rubbing honestly. bark on your legs. You know, uh, eating, eating ivy, poison ivy. I mean, I you don't need to go outside to know eating poison ivy is a bad, <laughs> it's a bad thing. <laughs> Wait, I thought poison was the good one. What's, oh, right, what's like the flammable means inflammable, exactly. like that thing. No, poison is always bad. <laughs> okay, good to know if I ever leave this f***ing place. You're on this hike, listen, and then you, you come across, uh, like, a Rolls Royce. All right. Okay, Rolls Royce. Doors hanging open. Ooh. Little blood on the seats. Mm. Little bit. Just a, just a smidge. All right. Um, enough to, you know, make things creepy and weird. Right. Um, but, but six months worth of food in the trunk. It, you open up the trunk, six months worth of food, maybe the kind of indent of where a toddler might have been sleeping. Otherwise, good to go. Otherwise, straight off the straight off the court, as they say. Right. What I'm trying to say is you don't cannonball that bitch. <laughs> Whatever that means. You, you take you drive her straight to Gibraltar. <laughs> And cash her From in. From Hyde Park, straight to <laughs> f***ing Gibraltar. What I'm trying to say is this thing was worth a pretty penny, okay? All right. You ever heard of money? It's actually pretty f***ing valuable on the high seas. Money is valuable? I said it. It's actually worth a lot, dumbass. Ever heard of gold? <laughs> All right, I get that. You're basically, what, what you got here is a floating paycheck. Exactly. You gotta go cash that into exactly. the, the bank of Gibra Gibraltar. So they got it to Gibraltar. They sailed that bish back and... That's where the British Vice Admiralty Court convened a salvage hearing. Now, I'm no seaman, so what this means is they had to decide whether the people who insured the boat had to pay the crew who salvaged it. Okay. But the court were as baffled about this mystery as you or I. Last thing they know is, you know, Captain Dave has insured this thing for a pretty penny. Next thing, the boat is just found in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, empty. Right. And people have just come along and go, hey, we got your boat. Uh, yeah, pay us for the boat that's insured. Yeah. And they're like, whoa, 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 slow the f*** down. Problem was, they suspected foul play by the crew. That's exactly what I was going to say. A conspiracy of sorts. And so a three-month court battle was launched. They searched the boat high and low, looking for evidence of a violent takeover or something. But they were unable to prove anything. When they pointed to the sword and its blood stains, the crew argued that it was like rust or something. Yeah. Um, when they pointed to like damaged bits of wood on the boat that they thought was a struggle, the crew said, oh no, that was like, that was there when they got the boat. Um, I love the idea of these guys, you know, searching like Poirot. You know, they search the upside of the boat, they search downside in the boat, and then at the end they, they get everyone down at the in, in the bottom quarters doing the you know the walk where they're like rounding up the mystery. They've got the whole crew out on the table. And it's like interesting that you were to find a boat just floating there, especially one insured for so much money. You know, he, he twirls his like Poirot pirate mustache. You and know, the, and the, like the camera looks at all like the crew and their eyes are shifting about shifting. super nervously. And then he's like, but I think you've forgotten to get rid of a very important piece of evidence, a piece of evidence that's buried right here under the floorboards. <laughs> Rips one board up, water, water shooting. It's like, ah, right, no, this is over this is here. The <laughs> More water. <laughs> He's like, right, this is a boat. All right, okay, yeah, no, they're fine, they're good to go. Like, boat <laughs> is sinking. Like, everyone's panicking and screaming, trying to get out. <laughs> Sorry, guys, guy, I forgot we were on a boat for a second. <laughs> So crucially, the insurers did end up paying the crew of the De Grazia, but only a sixth of the ship's value, which basically meant that they believed there was wrongdoing, but they couldn't prove it. And by the way, the full value of this boat in 1872 was $46,000, which is approximately one milli today. Okay. Pretty penny. But a sixth of a milli. Right. 
Like, you couldn't pay me that much to take a ship and sail it to Gibraltar to argue for a three-month court case. I got a lot on. I'd do it. I got a I lot. Don't. I got too much. <laughs> yeah. I'm here. I, I'm aware you don't. We have a paranormal podcast. You'd think we both don't. <laughs> I feel like we can podcast from the poop deck. I feel like that's fine. Straight from the poop deck. <laughs> Our new podcast. Like, intro music is all the same and everything. <laughs> but it's just like, if you drink seawater, <laughs> will you go blind? <laughs> like... All fire questions. If you follow the North Star forever, will you fall off the edge of the world? <laughs> Which is not far off the questions we ask on this podcast. It's not fair. really, honestly. So, this is the core of our story today. A real-life ghost ship discovered on the high seas, totally abandoned. And the lack of evidence about what happens means we can now speculate wildly about what actually happened. Thoughts? What do you think of the story so far? The crew killed them. The people that handed in the boat, they killed them. What, what, is, is there any... Because obviously the testimonies we're hearing at the minute are directly from the crew that discovered the boat. Correct. There's no third party involved. There was no one who discovered the boat but wasn't involved with the selling of the boat. Right. So everyone that discovered the boat and wanted to sell the boat are the only ones that can testify that this is how it was found. Right, that's a little bit suspicious. Okay. <laughs> to counter your point... Yeah! <laughs> well, where did you get a pirate sword? I splashed seawater in your face. <laughs> where did you get this? I boiled tap water and put in some sea salt. <laughs> I think the idea as to why they weren't murdered by the second crew... Right. ...is there was literally no sign of struggle whatsoever there was like tobacco and like pipes lying out that had just been smoked and just as if people just like quietly left they looked for like physical damage to the thing was there any sign i mean back then you're talking muskets and guns so there would have been some blood somewhere yeah because nowadays you know you get your seal team six type pirates coming in right and they you know they you, you wouldn't even see a struggle yeah. If, when they're, and they're coming in with like M16s, yeah. you know? These guys are pros. But an old fashioned pirate showdown, from what I know from popular culture, we're talking about boats smashing into each other, cannonballs going off, yeah. screams and blood and muskets and. Uh, Orlando Bloom is swinging across a rope. He like kicks a, a skeleton's head off. Yeah, it's just know. bones everywhere curses like flying through the sky it's it's insane so i can i can understand why yeah no sign of a struggle would be pretty suspicious in this time yeah so basically what we've got right now is just is like you say a poirot good old-fashioned mystery to solve right and much like poirot would have used back in his time um he's I, not real i have what poirot is not a real person it's right. a character by agatha christie no agatha christie is the fake one poirot made agatha christie up i think that's Miss Marple, ever heard of Miss Marple? <laughs> Sorry, you think Miss Marple Poirot and Poirot invented, were best friends? You think Poirot invented Agatha Christie as a woman who wrote him into reality? I think Poirot was a creative man, and he was very intelligent, and he took time out of his day from solving mysteries to write novels on the side. By Agatha Christie. <laughs> About Poirot. <laughs> I mean, yeah, right. He changed his name from Poirot to Agatha Christie at a time. I could see that. I could see that. Pen I, name. <laughs> What I have is a wheel of fortune of possibilities uh, for what happened to the crew of the Mary Celeste. Oh, hell yes. Let's spin it. Oh, my God. You actually have a spinnable wheel. So Kit has, um, has turned his laptop to reveal an actual... How did you make this? This is a uh, looks like some sort of program where I, we... I can... learned to code. The main things I've been working on is... Uh, learning to code to build this and uh, learning the ingredients for for seawater. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, one is a lot harder than the other. <laughs> I mean, fi coding. <laughs> finding the perfect balance between salt and water <laughs> is just not meant to be. I mean, God is incredible. <laughs> you see, whenever we run out of Lombardi on the Patreon, I'm going to restock with this paranormal life, seawater. Tremendous for your hair. <laughs> for your <laughs> rubbing I mean, your eyes. Let's face it, it's probably healthier than Lombardi at this point. 
with how long that stock's been sitting. I mean, we tried to drop a fish into a tank of Lombardi and he just dissolved in the air before he could actually hit it. I don't think he hit the surface. No, absolutely not. <laughs> it's really worrying. It was it was like a comet re-entering the atmosphere. It just it burned dis- out on it. It, it burned out before it hit the surface. <laughs> Uh, so if you would like some of this delicious nectar, check out the This Paranormal Life Patreon. We can get your own bottle of toxic Lombardi. All right, let's spin this bad boy. Ready? Yeah, let's spin the wheel. All right, option number one. So the wheel has produced the suggestion cursed ship. So what I kind of left out up to this point and what some people don't know is that Mary Celeste although famous for this case, was actually deemed incredibly unlucky even before this. Really? You might have known her by her maiden name, the Titanic. (laughs) Over about 13 years, it had something like 17 owners. It was renamed a couple times. It was mostly known for um, being in shit condition and losing (laughs) money on doing runs between Boston to Africa. I mean, that's a big run, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah. It's very true. Even after it was sold on, it ended up wrecking off the coast of Haiti in January 1885. And basically, uh, it became the subject of another insane insurance scam. Basically, he went ashore and tried to claim that there was an enormous, there's an enormous amount of stuff in this that was worth a lot of money and that someone would be getting an amazing deal out of salvaging this ship. Right. He claimed that there was, you know, hundreds of casks of, uh, of beer. There was a th- like thousands of dollars of cutlery, tons of fish. Apparently, this was patently untrue. Uh, when it was investigated, <laughs> there was... Well, what was described as bottom of the barrel runoff from smashed and leaking <laughs> bottles of beer found in casks, 780 barrels of rotten fish. Yeah, he said there was thousands of dollars of cutlery. Turned out to be $50 worth of dog collars. Look, one man's trash is another man's treasure. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. To to the, you know, to the man with the 50 dogs, he's hit the jackpot. <laughs> Uh, And basically what happened to that captain was they obviously decided what he was doing was totally illegal. The crime for which at the time was actually punishable by death. Wow. (laughs) For this kind of insurance fraud. Fair play for the 1800s. They actually decided that that would have been too harsh. And I think they gave him a few years in the slammer. Wow. But he didn't lose his life for that one. I just assume it's the 1800s. Like every crime is punishable by death. Yeah. Just depending on what mood the, the, the punisher is in. At best, you're getting fingers chopped off. Right. At worst, death. Death. Absolutely death. At worst, fingers chopped off. Then death. Then, yeah. And then, like, shoved up your nose. Then dead. <laughs> Something really bad. Fingers chopped off. Then used to flip you off <laughs> as you're beheaded. The worst death of all. The <laughs> most shameful death of all. What I'm trying to say was this was a very unlucky ship. Very famous for being unlucky. It is possible that this ship was simply cursed and that a curse-like fate befell the the um, original captain and his crew. Just one possibility. I think it's about time we spun the wheel again. Uh, all right. I hope there's some wicked game show music playing right now as we're spinning this bad boy. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> you're editing this like Monday night, 2 a.m. You're like, if you think I'm putting music in here. <laughs> All right. Time to spin the wheel again. <laughs> Curse ship again. <laughs> It's gone straight back to cursed ship. I think my laptop might be cursed. Oh, he's spinning the wheel again. We stuck this one right in. Oh, we hit pirates. pirates. Interesting. So this is pretty self-explanatory. Yar har. <laughs> yar har. Aye, it is, matey. It's the 1800s. We're talking about sailing between um, the Americas, kind of the West Indies, all the way across the Atlantic to... Europe. Pirates did operate in these areas. They did operate in this time. Pirates operate today. But we did say pirates of this era would have caused a ruckus. They would have caused a mess and a fight. So it's very to true. have no evidence of a struggle. I don't think it was pirates. I tend to agree. Pirates like to leave their mark. From what I know of pirates, you know, they want to know we've been here. We right. did that. You take they take over a ship and then they fly the pirate flag. The, you the know? Jolly Roger. You're exactly. Quite right. yeah, like this story would have started very different. The captain of the Del Grazia would have, you know, as soon as he got into, you know, what's that in the distance? I see a foggy outline of a, of a boat. And then as soon as they get close enough, the Jolly Roger, the skull and yeah. crossbones comes into focus. <gasps> it's too late. Turn back. Man, the cannons. 
you know, there's gonna be a struggle. There's yeah. gonna absolutely there's gonna be an absolutely a struggle. So, so I think it's rules not, out pirates. It's not gonna be pirates. Nah. Let's spin the wheel. <laughs> Definitely messed things out of this as well. Science. <laughs> What? The wheel has chosen science. So science is just one of the possibilities. <laughs> they evolved right there on the ship. <laughs> A rational conclusion is, I suppose, one possibility of what may have happened. Um, basically, there's a filmmaker, Anne McGregor, and she did some deep research on the Mary Celeste. She basically hypothesized that maybe one of two things happened. When I say science, she went back to the 1800s records of the like sea temperature wind speed Speeds, wow. All of that stuff. How which, is that logged? Which, by the way, goes back to the 1700s internationally. I did not know this. That's insane. And she worked out that, judging by these records of the sea and weather, if the boat had been abandoned just off the coast of the Azores, the boat would have sailed itself to pretty much precisely where the crew of the Del Grazia found it. Basically meaning that... They probably abandoned it at that point. One other circumstance that may have played into them abandoning the ship altogether, the nine barrels of alcohol that were empty compared to the other 1,700 had a slight difference to the others. They were made of red oak, not white oak. Okay. Apparently the difference is red oak is more porous. Study, studies have been done on this, comparing storing alcohol in red oak barrels compared to white oak barrels. If that alcohol started to evaporate and if something sparked it, it could set off an explosion or a huge flame. Right. And wouldn't necessarily leave any marks on the ship. It could be that crew <laughs> heard explosions, heard bangs, and assumed that the ship was about to blow up into a million pieces. Uh... Maybe abandoned ship. Little did they know it was only nine barrels out of 1,700 and the others were totally fine. Right. Interesting. I mean, you said she did deep research into this this whole mystery. But I did. did she have a wheel? I mean, we've done our research and we've got a wheel. So the listeners of the Paranormal Nation, look, we're, we'll leave that one up to you if you want to trust this quote unquote scientist or, you know, if you want to step up to the high stakes table Roll the dice with your paranormal pals, Kit and Rory. Listen, you're going to listen to some asshole with a PhD. You're going to listen to the two yeah. guys in sunglasses and trench coats in the corner rolling dice in the alley exactly. for uh, solid gold chunks. Speaking of spinning the wheel, I think it's that time again. To spin the wheel! Science again. Okay. <laughs> spin the wheel! Curse ship again. Sure. Spin the wheel. Okay. Back to curse this is, ship. This is All awesome. right, look, I might actually take the scientist's advice now because <laughs> this is mad. Pirates. All right. We're going to get there. Spin the okay, wheel. This what is, is this? Awesome. Science again. Jesus. I'm just beginning to see the flaws in the wheel. Oh, what is that? Thief brothers <laughs> are alter aliases. <laughs> There were two German crewmen above the Mary Celeste, brothers Volkert and Boy Lorenzen, who became a focus of the investigation when it was discovered that none of their personal possessions were found on the abandoned ship. Uh, okay. So everyone else's shit was left behind except theirs. But when one researcher, who we just spoke about, Anne McGregor, looked into this... No wheel Anne, as I call her. <laughs> she spoke to a Lorenzen family descendant who claimed that the pair had lost their gear in a shipwreck earlier in 1872, and that's why they didn't have any gear. No gear? And that they had, quote, no motive. I guess we don't know what else might have stolen. Yeah, there could have been extra booty on the ship that we don't even know about. Exactly. But that still doesn't really explain. Two guys aren't going to you know, overcome a family and five other men. Right. As we've established, that two-year-old is a real badass. Very true. Are we really going to spin the wheel till we get the last option? All right, spin the wheel. And I would be remiss if I didn't uh, mention one of the other popular theories. Greys. I'm listening. <laughs> you have my attention for once. Um, I did... was starting to think this podcast was a f joke. <laughs> Did UFOs abduct the entire crew? Absolutely. You, All you're, right, expecting, <laughs> you're expecting way more resistance. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to this episode. <laughs> um, so 
I have no more evidence. Sorry, I, let me rephrase. I don't have any evidence. What I have are crazy ass theories. <coughs> what do you make to be the most likely of all these outcomes? I, you know, uncharacteristically, I don't mind the science one. That was actually a pretty cool little uh, theory about how this could have come apart. Uh, honestly, I mean, obviously two dudes called the Thief Brothers are pretty <laughs> suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm still maybe not totally convinced that it wasn't just the crew that discovered the ship, that they were the ones that killed them and took the ship. Because I know we said it's there's possible. no signs of a struggle, but hell, we don't know. You got to think about this story from scratch. We're thinking, oh, how could they have done it if there was no sign of a struggle on the ship? We only think that there could have been a fight on the ship because that's what we've been told. Maybe the people invited them onto their ship. Maybe they met on the island. You know, this could have been this this could have been a whole different story that it, that has been completely, uh, you know, painted over. But but doesn't it seem weird that the log of the ship gets to we're we're six miles off the coast, which is nothing, by the way, yeah. six miles off the coast of this island, and then it just stops. I mean, it just stops, and then there's these weird jaggedy scraps in the book. <laughs> <laughs> All torn out. <laughs> um, yeah, that is a little bit weird. <laughs> Maybe the second crew like wrote the log from the very beginning to make it look yeah. like, real. And they're like, having a nice time. <laughs> nothing wrong. <laughs> no nothing wrong. Another beautiful day. I uh, think that's my my main theory that I'm going for. Really? The, ship that, the, the crew that handed it in, they killed them. I didn't really expect that. Really thought you were going to go for Grace. I kind of did. That's why I saved that shit for last. Um, <laughs> what, what's your theory? Researching this, I found that the, <laughs> the f***ing scientific explanation is actually pretty popular. I didn't really like it that much because it felt like a lot of things needed to happen for them to abandon ship. As someone online pointed out, they were like, a captain, you know, the captain goes down with the ship. Yeah. The captain doesn't leave the damn ship unless that thing is effed. Right, unless, right, right. Which it wasn't. There was nothing wrong with it. That's true. So That is true. It, just a combination of things. Maybe a couple of these barrels went up in smoke. Maybe. We do know there was three feet of water. Apparently, that's not that much in ship terms. It doesn't seem that much. So, but maybe they thought they were... I've okay, had more feet of water in my goddamn bathtub. Three feet of water is quite a lot if you're standing up. That's like up to your like stomach. What? Or up to my neck. <laughs> Me. I keep forgetting how small you are. Yeah, it's really... F***ing shit. <laughs> Don't I know it? I might actually cut this from the podcast because they didn't know either. <laughs> <laughs> so I think with the scientific explanation, a lot of different things had to come together. But on the other hand, we don't really have any other solid uh, things to go on. It's true. The wheel has not been kind to us. No. Despite me designing the wheel. I think if we're going to come down to a conclusion, what is yours today, Rory? I think my conclusion, unfortunately, today is going to be n a no. I do not believe this is a paranormal case. Unfortunately. I think it's a That's double sick. no. No one's coming down with a paranormal explanation. God damn it. Shit it all to hell. But you know, these things happen. It's fine. No biggie. And thank you so much to Monica and Paul again for submitting that story. Yeah. Loved the Mary Celeste. We took a long time getting around to that one. But uh, what a story it was. If you have any of your own thoughts about this episode, please send them to thisparanormallifepodcast at gmail.com. If you want to keep up with us on the socials, you can yeah. get us on Twitter at this para life you can find us on facebook at facebook.com forward slash this paranormal life there is of course the secret society where all the coolest and um most secretive listeners hang out and um talk shit about us <laughs> behind our backs because they keep banning us from the group That's i accidentally uh promoted a woman named joanne as a mod <laughs> and uh, first thing she did was remove me as admin. Yeah. Uh, like a I, dick move I really didn't see coming here, Joanne. I thought admin was above mod. Right. Turns me out too. It's another way around. Me too. It's crazy. It's like like I thought the, the freaking king would be able to do shit in chess, but he's actually a little coward. And he's always trying to hide everywhere. Turns out mod rhymes with God. Yeah. And, and Joanne is very much the queen of this board. <laughs> the mean queen, I call her. 
<laughs> the mean queen who's also a tween. And as always, if you want to go that extra mile and get a little bit extra in return, we've got the Patreon. That's right. That's patreon.com forward slash this paranormal life, where from right. $2 a month, you can get access to our show notes where we post all the pics, links and other shit to do with every episode. Um, for $5 a month, you can get bonus episodes. Uh, and beyond that, you can get into merchandise. We've got t-shirts, Lombardi, Liquid of the Dead. To give you a taste of what one of those bonus episodes is like, here's a clip from the last one. So it's 2003, and a man named Oscar Munoz, I think I'm butchering that. But... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Successfully butchered. Uh, is walking through a deserted Chilean town in the Atacama Desert. Okay, fine. As, as you, you do. do. Yeah. Get some there. of those golden rays. <laughs> Chill out. You want, you want to, for you once, you want a goddamn you go break. To your, you go to your travel agents. I want a, a, a sun holiday. Maybe something by the beach. Just, you know, I've got a quick five days to take off work. Where, where can you send me? Two phrases. Ghost town and sandy ass crack. <laughs> Does that float your boat, Oscar? <laughs> ding, ding. Doors closed. <laughs> ah, shit. The next dude comes in and sits down. Uh, I was thinking somewhere uh, for skiing with the family. How'd you like ghost down sandy eyes? <laughs> they only have one resort to offer people. You pale bastard. You're gonna burn like a lobster on these slopes. So we're just going to take a moment right now to thank our patrons who've pledged so far. Special thanks to Roshin Gallagher. I don't really want her to be Roshin. I want her to take her time with this one. Uh, I just want to say thank you for contributing to the This Paranormal Life Patreon. Thank you to Sam Day. Sam, day or night, I know that you're going to have my back because that's what buddies are for. Except night, because I know you and I are both terrified of the dark. So they should just call you Sam Day. Wait, they do. They do. All right, so it's all good then, Sam. No hard feelings. Enjoy that nightlight, you cowardly bastard. <laughs> I'm right there with you, brother. Like scared little moths. I've got a flashlight like a man. <laughs> Thank you to Kevin G. Mora. Can I get some Mora, Kevin G? Because uh, this guy's addictive. <laughs> Thank you to you and Martin. <laughs> Me and Martin do what? What? You said you and Martin. Me and Martin do what? <laughs> I said you and Martin. Yeah, what do me and Martin do? Huh? Answer me! <laughs> Yo, you and, not you and. You yeah, and the name, Ewan, right, because we're saying that you say a name. Right, right no, not I a didn't sentence. just start a non sequitur. It's like a <laughs> sentence that wasn't. Sorry, right. sorry. I've been drinking a lot of seawater. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, you uh, and for the for the for the for the for the for the coin in the par the the bucket of the paranormal pals. It's been a long day, Christ. I was pretty skeptical about the seawater, but I tasted it. And it's pretty delicious. It's pretty good, right? <laughs> it's salty and refreshing. <laughs> thank you to Stephen McEwen. Stephen, matey, how would you like a little cruise on board the SS Friendship? Aye, it's cursed. Aye, there's three feet of water in the vessel. But I'm looking for a, for a little cabin boy, and I think you fit the bill. That's the most intimidating thank you I think we've given on this <laughs> podcast. Thank you to Costa Hagai, Haji, Hagi. What's the Costa getting you on this here vessel? The SS Friendship. Aye, the only thing left is a couple of bottles of rum and the scorched outline of a burnt child. <laughs> but we'll clean her up and we'll sail the seas, Costa. <coughs> it's, it's pirates this is a really cold. hard voice to do. <laughs> Thank you to Dylan Dwyer. Dylan, you better not be spilling any of my rum when we're on the, the SS Friendship. Come along, matey. Thank you so much for throwing, for tossing a doubloon in the hat of the paranormal pirates. <laughs> Topical. <laughs> and lastly, but not leastly, thank you to Anarcho Murphy. Ooh, I thought I was the captain of this vessel, but it's you, Captain Murphy. He takes it, drives it immediately into the rocks. <laughs> All of our patrons are dead. <laughs> well played, Murphy, you sea dog. <laughs> you salty bastard. <laughs> oh, man. That's how you prove yourself to be the best pirates, be the biggest shit of all. <laughs> well, thank you so much to everyone we've shouted out so far. Yeah, um, If you guys haven't heard your shout out just yet, that's because it is on the way. Yeah. 
And I will say for people, you know, who make it this far into the episode, just as a little reward, I want to let you guys know that there's a couple big episodes that we've been putting off for a while. You know, ones that we really want to do justice to. The big paranormal events. Of course. And we've got one of those... The Birth of Jesus. <laughs> Ten part series. We got one of those right on the horizon crawling towards us like that girl from the grudge. Uh, and it's going to be with you guys very soon. We're looking forward to it. Um, it's, it's about time we had another yes on this podcast. And I think this might just be it. Anyway, spin the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much uh, again for tuning into this episode. Hope you've enjoyed it. Absolutely. We will see you next week for yet another Paranormal Tale. Bye-bye, mateys.